this video I will explain the derivation of Marshall in demand function in case of perfect substitutes so perfect substitutes are those commodities uh, that can be substituted with each other continuously at a fixed rate uh, the utility function will look like this one uh, for example alpha x1 plus beta x2 so in this case the marginal rate of substitution is a constraint quantity which can be derived as the ratio of marginal utilities of x1 and x2 sorry this must be del u by del x1 over del u by del x2 which is alpha over beta uh, in this case the interference curves will be uh, straight lines and uh, downward sloping so in these two figures the uh, the straight lines and blue color are the indifference curves which are downward sloping and uh, linear showing the constraint marginal rate of substitution so the optimum rule for consumers uh, optimization is uh, marginal rate of substitution uh, should be equal to the price ratio uh, in this case also the optimum rule or the tangency condition between the indifference curve and the uh, budget constraint is not satisfied so the quantity consumed of the commodity in fact depends upon the prices of the commodities so we can we can discuss uh, the uh, optimum quantity of the commodity demanded by the consumer and the uh, demand function of the commodities in three cases uh, the first case will be the first case look like uh, let us suppose that let us suppose that uh, the marginal rate of substitution is greater than the price ratio so the marginal rate of substitution is nothing but the slope of indifference curve is greater than the price ratio the price ratio is nothing but the slope of budget constraint so in this figure the indifference curves are stiffer than the budget constraint and the utility will be maximized at this point where the consumer will consume x1 commodity only so on the reverse case when the marginal rate of substitution is smaller than the price ratio the consumer will consume x2 commodity only and the third case is when the marginal rate of substitution is equal to the price ratio the consumer can consume any combination of x1 and x2 so on the basis of this rule we can derive the demand function so now let us let us discuss the case first in detail case first case first so case first is when marginal rate of substitution between the two goods is uh, greater than the price ratio p1 over p2 so in this case the marginal rate of substitution is simply nothing the ratio of marginal utilities marginal utility of 1 over marginal utility of 2 is greater than p1 over p2 so this implies that marginal utility of 1 over p1 is greater than marginal utility of 2 over p2 so this implies that the consumer the consumer gets more utility by spending one dollar here than by spending here so in this case the consumer consumes x1 commodity only so in 
in terms of graph we can we can express this as suppose that this is the budget constraint uh, this is the budget constraint so the blue line is budget constraint the slope of budget constraint it is smaller means the indifference curves are steeper so in this case the indifference curve will look like this they are steeper and the the point of maximum utility lies here so this is x1 axis x2 axis so in this case uh, the demand for x1 or the consumer spends all of his income on x1 uh, and the demand for x1 will be given by his total wealth divided by the price of first commodity and the demand for x2 will be zero so we can formally write this as when marginal rate of substitution uh, in our case uh, this is alpha over beta is greater than the price ratio p1 over p2 the demand for x1 commodity the demand for x1 commodity sorry we can write the demand for x1 as x1 uh, p1 p2 and w is so we can divide it into three cases uh, when when alpha over beta which is the marginal rate of substitution is greater than p1 over p2 so in this case the demand for x1 will be w over p1 and uh, when alpha by beta equals p1 over p2 so in this case the demand for x1 will be any combination on the budget constraint so from 0 unit to w over p1 so this means when when the marginal rate of substitution and the budget constraint they overlap each other uh, the consumer can buy any quantity of x1 from 0 unit to w over p1 unit and the demand for x1 will be 0 on the extreme case when alpha over beta is smaller than p1 over p2 so this is the demand for x1 now the demand for x2 commodity can be expressed in the similar manner as demand for x2 commodity uh, which is the function of p1 p2 and w so can be expressed in the three cases so when when alpha over beta is greater than p1 over p2 uh, we observe that the consumer consumes all x1 so the demand for x2 will be the demand for x2 will be zero uh, when alpha over beta equals p1 over p2 we see that uh, the consumer can consume from zero units of x2 to w over p2 units of x2 so he can consume any combination of p w any combination of x1 and x2 so the third case is when alpha over beta is smaller than p1 over p2 so in this case so in this case the demand for x2 will be w over p2 all the consumer spends all his income in x2
So to remember uh, this demand function, uh, we can simply uh, use the rule uh, that marginal rate of substitution equals the price ratio uh, in the equilibrium and when marginal rate of substitution is greater than the price ratio so in this case marginal utility of one over marginal utility of two becomes greater than p1 over p2 so this becomes mu1 over p1 is greater than mu2 over p2 so in this case spending one dollar on first commodity gives more utility and the consumer consumes x1 commodity only so in this case there there will be no consumption of x2 so on the reverse case when this is smaller than the price ratio this is smaller than the price ratio so in this case spending a dollar on the second commodity will be more valuable so this case is the third one in this case the consumer will spend all of his income on x2 commodity so and the third case is when marginal rate of substitution equals price ratio in this case any combination of x1 and x2 will be optimal and the demand for x1 will be any quantity from 0 to w over p1 and the demand for x2 will be any quantity over w by p2 so what this means is that when the budget line and the indifference curve they coincide so the consumer can consume this quantity where x2 is zero the consumer can consume this quantity this quantity this quantity this quantity or even this quantity where x1 is zero so now uh, we we look at an example where alpha and beta are one so now let the utility function which is the function of x1 and x2 is simply x1 plus x2 so this is a special case where alpha equals beta equals 1 so following the same logic uh, we can express the demand the Marshall and demand function for x1 x1 p1 p2 w adds in the three cases uh, the three cases are when the marginal rate of substitution in this case is one so when one is greater than p1 over p2 so when marginal rate of substitution is greater than p1 over p2 or this can be simplified as p2 is greater than p1 so in this case it becomes clear that the second commodity is more expensive and the consumer spends all his wealth on the first commodity w over p1 and when one equals p1 over p2 implies p1 equals p2 the consumer can consume any quantity from 0 to w over p1 and the consumer consumes 0 when 1 is smaller than p1 over p2 implying that P2 is less than P1. So similarly, the demand function for X2 can also be expressed. Uh, that is X2, which is the function of P1, P2, and W. So when one one is the marginal rate of substitution here one is greater than p1 over p2 this also implies that 
P2 is greater than P1. So in this case, the demand for X2 will be zero because the X2 commodity is more expensive. And the second case is when one equals to P1 over P2 or marginal rate of substitution equals price ratio. This also implies that P1 equals P2. And in this case, the demand for X2 will be any 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 point between 0 and W over P2 and when the marginal rate of substitution is smaller than the price ratio this also implies in this case that P2 is smaller than P1 the consumer spends all of his income on the second commodity and its demand will be W over P2 Thank you for watching this video and please subscribe to my channel for watching further videos in the future.